Okay. We're recording. Well, welcome everyone to uh, this year's last uh, historical roots of our time uh, talk. Um, today, we have a very special speaker, um, Dr. Natalia Ivchik from uh, Associate Professor from Rivni State Humanities University in Ukraine, speaking to us from Romania um, on mnemonics and the public memory work in Ukraine. Um, I think that uh, for this talk, I want to make uh, uh, give some special thanks to our colleagues across the across the university, um, including the history department, um, HNAC, IGS, the Lloyd International Honors College, and Jewish Studies program within the Department of Religious Studies, all of which gave us generous support for uh, to to for us to be able to offer the, this talk and 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 offer support to uh, uh, Professor uh, Ivicic. So um, I think uh, I'm going to turn, we, we're going to have a, a short presentation and, and as the series, you know, has the series has been in the past, open it up to, to questions quickly and um, then have some commentary from both uh, Ann Parsons and Jeff Jones who from the department or, or it was Ann's, uh, Natalia is Anne's guest, so Anne is going to do an introduction um, of, of Professor Ivchik. Anne, I want to turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Jamie. And Jamie, as people come in the waiting room, if you're able to keep letting them in. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, we're so pleased today to have Dr. Natalia Ivchik with us. Uh, she holds a PhD in history and is Associate Professor of the Department of Political Sciences at Rivna State Humanities University in Rivna, Ukraine. Um, she has interests in memory policy, ethno-political processes, the history of genocide, and a particular focus around issues of women and gender in the Holocaust. And she's participated in seminars and conferences around the world, including Israel, Germany, and Poland, and has been a fellow at numerous institutions, in including the US um, Holocaust Memorial Museum, and the Shoah Foundation, among others. Um, for me personally, Natalia is just an um, incredible advocate for public memory in Ukraine um, and digging into difficult histories of the Holocaust and Holodomor in Ukraine um, in order to make a better society, focusing on civil society, democracy, um, I've worked with her now for two years with Mnemonics, their um, NGO that works on public memory in Ukraine. And um, she's just a pleasure to work with. Um, and it's really a privilege to have her speak with us today. And I appreciate um, her talking. I know we have a number of, this is just a personal um, uh, uh, thought. We have many guests today and I appreciate that. And we have many, um, public history students in our master's in history museum studies program. And I'd like um, just to ask those students as you're listening to the talk to think of questions about um, uh, that international public memory work. And with that, I'll turn it to Natalia. Can I start? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, can I share my screen? Uh, I'm just giving up. Um, a second. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. That's good. Um, good afternoon and good evening uh, to all. I am sincerely thankful to Professor Persons and other colleagues from the University of North Carolina and Greensboro. Uh, for the invitation and this opportunity to talk today and tell you about the activities of the uh, NGO mnemonics uh, um, in Ukraine. I will try briefly uh, describe the work of mnemonics uh, in connection with the limited time of, of the speech. Today I'm speaking uh, from the members of our organization um, because in, in, in the condition of the Russian war um, against Ukraine, each of us uh, unfortunately found himself in difficult uh, situation and different, different places. So I'd like to start uh, 
of OK. Just, I don't, um, just give me this one. I'd like to start from the our the, the main page of uh, of our official websites, NGO Center for Studies of Memory Policy and Public History and Mnemonics. It's a voluntary, independent, and self-governing nonprofit public association uh, whose main uh, purpose uh, is scientific studies in memorial policy and public history, search, development, and promotion uh, of optimal democratic models uh, in the field of memory policy of Ukraine. Our center was established on January uh, 28, 2016, uh, on the initiative of Rimne historians, Professor Maxim, Maxim Hon, um, me, and uh, um, um, Dr. Petro Dolhanov. So uh, from 2016 until now, we have realized nine projects, which were su supported by the Democracy Foundation of the US Embassy in Ukraine, the Federal Foreign uh, Office and Foundation Remembrance, Responsibility and Future. And also uh, NGO Mnemonics uh, is cooperating with other Ukrainian um, NGOs like Ukrainian Center for Holocaust Studies, um, Center for Interethnic Relations Research uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, Europe. Um, this organization was located in Kharkiv. And also European NGOs uh, like Cent uh, Central Europe Center for Research and Documentation, Germany. Also, we cooperate with uh, uh, Ukrainian, European and uh, uh, American scientists, like uh, with Professor uh, and Person, uh, Persons. Um, we are um, actually, we work together for the creating of the movie about the um, uprising of Jewish victims in Tuchin uh, ghetto during the, during the Holocaust. On this slide, you can, uh, you can see actually what do we do and uh, the main directions of our activity is focusing on the work, um, our teaching basic um, approaches uh, to memory studies, also promoting of social uh, consolidation and conflict resolution based on the memory of different social groups, uh, promoting uh, the cultivation of values of tolerance, uh, we set up memorial signs dedicated uh, to the history of non-dominant social groups like ethnic, religious. Um, we also form an inclusive memorial uh, space uh, in our region, but also in Ukraine and other cities. We create modern educational tools for schools and universities for the study of multicultural history of Ukraine and uh, uh, also uh, for especially about the Holocaust. We organize summer schools, workshops, uh, trainings, and educational seminars uh, on historical topics. And um, we try to introduce new com commemorative practices in urban spaces. Uh, so uh, we try to do this um, uh, with, uh, in, and actually we use different forms for our work, like organize the academic conferences, uh, policy of memory uh, in scientific and practical ways, and also publish the conference uh, preceding publication, research, publication monographs of Ukrainian researchers, and uh, uh, we uh, translation and translated of Jewish sources, memories, uh, and academic monographs into, uh, into Ukrainian. Uh, so on this, uh, <clears throat> in this picture, you can see the photo on the conference participants in 2017. Um, we started to organize the conference uh, from uh, in 2016, and the conference's uh, thematic focus was commemoration of the memory of victims of genocides and mass killings. More than 50 participants from 10 regions of Ukraine and Ukrainian speakers and specialized focusing on the memory policy topic have been invited uh, to the conference. As uh, also, um, as I mentioned before, um, the mnemonic team, um, mnemonics team, mnemonic team is also researching and publishing monographs of Ukrainian researchers. So um, in these pictures, you can see like the 
like uh, it's not all of them it's only three um it's uh, the first one it's a monograph uh, of maxim hon petro dohanov and that it, and in mine it's uh, um, about the symbolic space uh in our city in Rina. we try to analyze the uh, um our um city's space and uh, <clears throat> And also uh, this monograph presented like the, the gender aspect of the symbolic space in our cities. Uh, the, another one, uh, it's uh, um, actually, it's a, it, it's a book of Maxim Hon. Uh, it's a book about the, uh, our city, it's interwar period about the Jewish uh, um, in our city, about the daily life there uh, in our cities and also, um uh, like this um during this period and their like relationship uh, with other ethnic groups in arena um like poles uh, ukrainians germans czechs and um, their disappearance uh, uh, during the holocaust the third one um book it's uh, a book uh irina levchuk uh, uh, it's this book represented women uh, emancipating in Poland during the interwar period also. And uh, actually the book uh, reveals uh, the activities of women's organizations of the three ethnic groups, uh, Jewish, Ukrainian and Polish. Also we have, um, we have translated Jew uh, Jewish uh, sources and memories as I mentioned, and academic monographs into Ukrainian and share them with uh, participants in the summer schools, workshops, uh, universities and libraries in Ukraine. For example, um, like uh, the book of Jeffrey Birds about the Holocaust in Rovna, uh, in Rivna and uh, uh, memories, uh, memories of um, Holocaust victims uh, of Haya Musman. Um, it's, uh, um, a really uh, great book, Memoirs about the, um, this period, and um, this book showed how uh, it was uh, the, the, the uh, relationship between uh, different ethnic groups and how it was like, how looked uh, our city uh, before the Second World War. Another form, uh, another form, um, another form, sorry, um, for our work is uh, scientific work and public history. So, <clears throat> um, in this picture, you uh, uh, you can see a mnemonics results that have been uh, created for the last um, six weeks, uh, six years. Sorry, uh, and uh, all of them are aimed uh, at the, our target, like not our like target groups. We are working with uh, teachers, uh, with pupils, uh, with lecturers, students local government uh, deputies, journalists, and museum workers. So uh, we are created uh, a virt virtual map, multicultural arena. This map included uh, different architectural, architectural sorry, uh, buildings, uh, which uh, were saved and destroyed uh, during the interwar period and during the Second World War. And um, uh, they they show the different like religious educational um, uh, buildings uh, and culture buildings also. And uh, uh, the another one uh, is still in progress. It's uh, um, it's the interactive map symbolic space in Berlin. So uh, this this result this map. Um, it will be created. Uh, it will. It, it will create uh, during the, the our last project, uh, which called uh, Memory Pass. And uh, actually, this project um, is focused um, to memorialize of the victims of the different groups, and uh, especially like uh, uh, Jewish victims, uh, in our region, in Rivne region, and in Volin. A region, so we call it like the the Volin region, but it, it um, like um, combined to um, to oblast to to regions in our uh, in western part of Ukraine. Uh, also, we um, 
uh, we made uh, documentaries uh, for these six years. Uh, we made like four docu uh, documentaries. Um, the first one, it's a documentary movie uh, about the, our Rivna town, uh, the executed town, about the, uh, the Holocaust in Rivna. The, another one, uh, The Man with the Face, uh, it's a uh, um, documentary animation uh, about the uh, uh, one uh, um, person, one man, uh, who is, uh, who, who was uh, like, and actually who is uh, the, uh, the writer among the nation, nations, um, Yakiv Suhanko, and uh, he saved uh, during the Second World War in our city, the Jewish family, um, the Varvara Barats. So we are decided to, to create uh, the movie and to, to share this movie um, uh, in schools in our region and not only in our region. It's uh, all of them, all of these uh, um, documentaries are available uh, with English subtitles. Um, on our official websites, uh, website and also in YouTube. You can find it uh, if you're interested. The third one is doomed uh, the history. Um, um, the third one about the victims uh, uh, and daily life and the experience of Jewish victims offering the ghetto. And uh, the Last one, it's about the uprising of the tomb. It's about the uh, uprising uh, of Jewish victim, uh, victims in uh, uh, Tuchin Ghetto. So interactive board game for pupils, it's also our product uh, and we shared with, uh, it's about the, it's a, ma it's a board game for pupils and uh, uh, about the multicultural uh, arena uh, before the war, before the second world war. World calendar. Um, multicultural arena and uh, summer schools. So the, the one, uh, the first one, uh, towns that do not remember. It's, um, um, we are invited people um, from uh, all Ukraine and uh, we try to teach them and to show them how our, our like, Ukrainian cities and Ukrainian and cities like symbolic space of cities can remember and not remember about the about the past and uh, uh, memory pass uh, this uh, school summer school uh, also in progress uh, because um, so we had to organize the school in April 2022 but for now, it's um, it's not possible to do. So uh, we are waiting uh, where where the Russian war against Ukraine uh, is ended. <clears throat> the virtual museum of one street uh, with air history, Hovan um, kids like the high and sick. It's a, a museum of one street, and we try to show that uh, the multi uh, like the multicultural space and. Uh, um, for example, one street like in like the main street in our city, and uh, also like the pupils and the young people and also guests of our city, they can use it like the, their phones and to to try it and to show this uh, museum, um, virtual museum um, uh, with their phones. Um, and uh, so the, I know that um, when we presented this virtual museum, uh, in pupils in our city in Rimna, they were uh, they were excited. Um, virtual exhibitions, uh, humanity over the the abyss uh, of hell. It's a story about the um, stories about the people who are saved. Um, um, Jewish victims and also Poles during the Second World War. And graphic novel, and um, I, t I, I will tell you a little bit later about this, um, this novel, Ornithophobia. And also we have podcasts and lectures with focus on the Second World War and the Holocaust in Berlin. So um, in, uh, in this in in this slide you can see the like screenshots uh, of uh, 
two of the um, our documentary uh, movies, the first one and the last one. And uh, this is um, actually a graphic novel, Ornithophobia. So uh, it's uh, uh, the first time when the, our NGO mnemonics, um, we are created and uh, try to create the, uh, this graphic novel. And this uh, uh, novel about the trauma involving uh, during the Second World War and the Holocaust. Ornithophobia is a phobia associated with uh, uh, the fear of birds, as well as the name of the first graphic novel created by our NGO. And the, um, this product brings uh, readers uh, to the imaginary world uh, where the war goes between ornithos, uh, bird-like uh, creators. So uh, this novel uh, includes like 40 pages of the, uh, and tell about the events of one day, which uh, however affected many lives. Uh, with ornithophobia, we try and, uh, and try to promote an important discussion and reflection on the legacy left by the Second World War to the inhabitants of Western, uh, West, Western Volina. And it, uh, this graphic novel also available in English version. <clears throat> so uh, the next one, um, what I mean, uh, the forms, uh, uh, what we are doing and what we are we did in during the, uh, uh, for these uh, six years in our NGO, it's um, initiative. Uh, it's actually memorialization. And uh, in 2018, um, uh, so we are, our organization uh, initiated the creation of um, installation of stamping blocks uh, stumbling, Stolpenstein and uh, uh, stumbling stones. And um, actually, Rina had become one of the first cities uh, where, uh, where was installed not only one, um, and there were uh, established five stones. And they are presented, uh, presented victims of uh, different, uh, different ethnic groups. For example, um, Jakub Suhenko, uh, I mentioned about, about them. Um, he's a uh, writer among the nation and he rescued by the family of uh, Varvara Braz, but he also helped other Jewish people. And unfortunately, he, he was exposed and shot in Kyiv. Uh, Zuzana Hinchanka, Polish poet uh, of Jewish origin, in the pre-war years, uh, she visited Rimna and uh, she was born in Kyiv in 1917. And uh, the, first, uh, the first 10 years she had lived in Rimna where uh, also been her grandmother. And uh, Zuzana Hinchanka uh, was tortured by the Nazis in Krakow um, in 1944. Uh, the family of uh, Jakub Krulik, uh, Jakub Krulik, uh, he was a teacher of Tarbut School in Rimna, and uh, Rahel Krulik, uh, um, she, she was a daughter, her, uh, his daughter, and uh, actually they, um, um, they were, they were, they weren't, they, they weren't uh, killed by Nazis, but they, uh, they did like suicide. So <clears throat> we decided to, to, um, to install these uh, um, stumbling, st stumbling stones. And um, actually um, the first two, um, the first uh, two victims, uh, they are symbolized uh, the Ukrainian part of the town population and commemorate uh, the noble behavior of Ukrainians in extreme conditions. Uh, also, um, um, Zuzana Hinchanka chose for herself the identify of a Polish poet, which is by the symbolized uh, the Polish part of the town. And uh, the Krulik family 
um, embodies the Holocaust victims um, themselves. And uh, as a, uh, and the, another sign, um, the uh, memorial sign, which was uh, um, established uh, in our city, it's a um, um, memorial sign dedicated to the Holocaust victims of the uh, Rivna Ghetto. It, uh, this sign was established uh, in December uh, 2019. And uh, it was like 78 years after the creation of Rivna Ghetto. And the monument uh, its victims was, uh, we decided to, to install. Um, this monument built from the bricks of the interwar period and uh, the fragment of the of the wall is now a symbol of the ghetto destroyed in July 1942. This fragment of the wall uh, literally uh, and symbolically remembers the tragic uh, events and uh, suffering of Rina Ghetto victims. As the memorial signed to the victims of Rina Ghetto is second our successful memorialization initiative uh, of our uh, organization in Rivna. And uh, um, actually the suit case, uh, it's uh, the symbol of the first replacement to the ghetto and suffering of the Holocaust victims. Uh, the menorah um, at the window in, um, in the wall refers to the Jewish religious tradition of uh, the Holocaust, uh, Holocaust victims. And uh, <clears throat> uh, um, after the beginning, um, uh, uh, after the beginning of the Russian war against Ukraine, uh, from March 2022, and Germany Monix uh, re re realizing the project, which is support. Um, um, a team of mnemonics and the project partners, also uh, local culture uh, in institutions and uh, initiatives, and uh, providing humanitarian aid for inhabitants of uh, Rigna and uh, internally displaced people um, who found a refugee in the Volin region. So uh, we are also recording um, testimonies um, and um, experience of displaced people from the east, eastern part of Ukraine and supporting, uh, um, also we are supporting, um, supported Rina Regional Local Museum. Uh, we collect in mem uh, testimonies and um, I hope so soon we can share them. Um, we want to show the Ukrainian uh, victims' experience, and we'd like to say that it can it cannot happen again in Ukraine or other countries. And uh, despite uh, of the war and German mnemonics, uh, we are continuing to work. We are, uh, we realize the project, and uh, um, we are grateful that we can chance to help uh, we can chance help to professor persons and to prepare uh, the commemoration practices um, in Tuchin and uh, in Rina in autumn 2022. I hope that we can do this and the commemoration uh, is dedicated to the 18th anniversary of the memory of the uprising victims in the ghetto of Tuchin. Uh, our organization, we are open to collaboration. And uh, also I'd like to say that we are so thankful that uh, uh, to you know, Professor Parsons, uh, Parsons uh, person that when we are created our movie about the uprising of um, Jewish uh, victims in Tuchin ghetto, um, She's connected to us with uh, um, Jewish victims who are survived during the, this, this time, um, Michael Emmont and Laura Oberland. And uh, we recorded the interviews with them and we use this uh, material in our movie. So thank you for this. And uh, I would say that 
um, we are thankful that for, for all the help, all of you and your help uh, to, to realize, to, to do, to, to organize our work more um, useful and important to our, our, for Ukrainians and, and for Ukraine as, as well. Thank you so much for your um, attention and support. And uh, I don't know how, how many times I, I've talked, but yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Um, uh, before we open it up to the Q&A and Dr. Jones will um, facilitate it, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And I really wanted to highlight um, here, just as a public historian, what the Monarchs does is so prolific. Um, and so powerful in terms of really committing to try to um, really teach the Holocaust to students and people in, in Ukraine in that area. So, and just in so many different ways, whether it's through books or virtual reality tours, calendars, graphic novels. So it just is um, incredibly powerful. Um, the movie that we helped um, develop um, we are now, Mnemonics has then let us use clips of the movie in our exhibit that we're creating for the North Carolina Council on the Holocaust. So it really has been this wonderful um, supportive relationship. So we thank you. Um, we wanted to open it up for questions and here I'll pass it to Dr. Jones. Um, feel free to either uh, to raise your hand for the questions and Dr. Jones will call on you. And you also can pop um, questions in the chat and I will be monitoring um, and raising the questions that come up from the chat. Uh, Jeff. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and Dr. Parsons, and thank you very much, Natalia, and welcome, everyone. I guess you've already been welcomed a couple of times. Is there a way we can stop, share the screen so that... Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't suppose it matters that much, but unless there's something you wanted to refer back to. Okay. Uh, so as uh, Dr. Parsons was saying, folks can put questions in the chat if they want and or just good old fashioned raise your hands. <laughs> We'd love to hear from uh, people that way as well. So please questions. Where are, where are they? Am I missing anybody? <laughs> Scroll back through here. Yes, there's a question. Uh, Emily, let's go uh, to you first. Hi, thank you so much for your talk and for joining us today. Yeah. I just wondered if you could speak a little bit about um, the sort of intervention of your work and the work of mnemonics against kind of what the discourses are nationally around um, the Holocaust and memory. Because, uh, you know, I just think about how certain histories are erased in the United States where we are. And uh, part of public history and memory work seems to be an intervention against that. So I wonder what the kind of larger conversations are and also like what curriculum is like around this before the work of an organization like yours. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, so, uh... Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, it wasn't easy to work with. Uh, um, it wasn't easy to work with, and it's still not easy. But it's easier than it was, for example, at the beginning of two thousand or nineteen nineties. Um, but um, actually, we are uh, with our with our colleagues. We are decided to. Uh, to do this and to talk about this more and more because uh, we are working uh, with students and uh, we we saw that um, it's it was like the um, amnesia you know that they didn't know a lot about the um, they know like in general information about the holocaust for example but uh, uh, for example, uh, about the local tragedies, about the local history, they didn't know anything. And uh, we are working with young generation and we know and understand that it's very, very important to say that uh, we have to remember uh, 
about the different ethnic groups, about the uh, Jewish victims, about the tragedy, uh, because it's not a separate, it's a part of our history. And uh, uh, yes, you know that uh, it also was difficult because uh, um, in Ukraine, the, the main way, historian way, way um, uh, was like a, Ukraine, Ukrainian centristic. And uh, that's why uh, we are also decided to do this, especially that's why we wanted to show the, uh, our like Rimnitz inhabitants and also we are not only like local organization, we work with, uh, with people, Ukrainian people, um, uh, Ukrainians that, like, in, in our state and in our region. And uh, um, that's why we are decided to, to show that, okay, so it's not uh, exclusive, it's inclusive model. And you, we can remember, uh, and we, we need to remember. And um, we were surprised when, especially for example, uh, when we are organized um, uh, like summer schools and uh, when we are were, uh, like doing our work in, at the university, at schools, we heard the, from the teachers about, okay, we, for teachers, they, they need more like educational tools um, for work, uh, for work and how, like, you know, that to explain, to show how to use it, these tools and to explain the, the pupils um, and to teach the, the pupils about the, the Holocaust uh, in our region, for example, and also in Ukraine. So <clears throat> for now, I would say that the situation is changed and the, it's easier to talk about the, and to teach about the, the Holocaust in our, our region also. And you know that we are like the Western part of Ukraine is also like difficult. Our, for example, our city is includes the different symbolic spaces, but we are glad that we can, we could change this symbolic space. And we are glad that we can teach uh, and to show also uh, uh, our citizens that, uh, and to, to talk about this, uh, that and to show them it's possible it's uh, uh, to, to, um, to change this, uh, this space. And I'm glad that, uh, for example, one of the, my uh, student, uh, he was written the uh, one project and applied it. And uh, um, this project uh, was won. It's about the symbolic signs in our city. And this is signs here include more than of them, it's about the Jewish, uh, actually Jewish like buildings, and Jewish uh, uh, about the Jewish history in our city. So um, sometimes, uh, yeah, it's it's difficult. But I would say that also we try to talk about the righteous among the nations, and we try to use it this way, and like through this way, we try to explain the um, this this topic and uh, this like the strategy and uh, to show like the different ways we can say that yes the ukrainians wars uh, was also um they were uh, we have like the the black page of history uh, during the holocaust they were um uh, sorry i my I, I forgot the word um yeah, um, not, 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 not victims are uh, opposite. Uh, perpetrators. Yeah, yeah, perpetrators. Thank you. So I'm so sorry that oh, perpetrators, okay. uh, perpetrators, but also uh, they uh, they saved of Jewish uh, victims, and that's uh, so we try to show like the both sides of of the of the history. Excellent. Thank you. Very good question, by the way. Thank and you. I, I don't know if we want to turn to uh, the chat or um, if yeah. you want. Yeah, that'd be ahead. great. Yeah, we have some wonderful questions from the chat. Um, the uh, so I'll actually, you know, ask a few. Um, one question um, 
was, I'll actually try to answer it and then Natalia, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, Cause it's one of the wonderful things I think you do. It was, you had shown books in your presentation um, mm -hmm. that were in Ukrainian and someone said, had those been translated into English? And I think the answer is that many of those books had originally been in English perhaps, and they were translated to Ukrainian. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so the books and the reason I, I particularly appreciate that um, work that you do. So many of the books were originally in English or done by scholars in different parts of the world. And what mnemonics has been trying to do has take that scholarship translated into Ukrainian so that people there in the place can access that history that's being done by scholars around the world. Both scholarship that's being done in Ukraine, um, certainly, but then also really bringing that international scholarship here. So that work of translation, which is so much, um, I find really beautiful. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to answer that question. Um, another um, question uh, was, um, uh, was the if you can talk some about um, uh, in Rivna itself, you had talked about the Holocaust and were the Jews in Rivna um, all killed? Um, and that was a question from the chat, were the Jews all killed, all the Jews in Rivna killed? Um, or if you can speak to that a little bit. Um, that's the first part of the question, were all of the Jews um, killed? A second question that's a little bit uh, you know, in the same ballpark is um, been, uh, um, how do you deal with any Holocaust deniers, people who are traumatized to learn that their grandparents collaborated with the Nazis? So one, if you can talk about the Holocaust in Rivna and um, Jews being killed, and second, how you've dealt with Holocaust deniers there. <clears throat> Thank you for all the questions. Uh, the first question, okay, so um, the arena was occupied by Nazis uh, um, in 1941 in the summer and the August uh, actually uh, this region and the city was occupied and uh, they were started like the, the first kill, um, um, shots uh, in our, our city and the first group of the victims, uh, they were men like young men, and uh, it's it was like they, they were they were killed around three hundred men, and uh, then it was started that the process of ghettoization and uh, you know the, the discrimination of the Jewish uh, uh, Jews in our city, and uh, the main. Um, um the main shot in our city it was happened um at six and uh, six until from six until like and during the two days six uh, eight uh, of november 1941 and like for these two days we were killed like more around uh, 17 thousand 500 Jew, uh, Jews from our city. The another part, more than 5,000 uh, Jews uh, were uh, moved uh, to the ghetto. And uh, in the ghetto were more than 1,000, uh, yes, the, 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 the one, uh, more than 1,000 of, of, uh, of children. I, I mean, I know because I calculated, I worked with a, um, a list of um, um, Jewish victims ghetto uh, in our city. Uh, so we, in our um, um, archive, local archive, we have this, like the whole list of Jewish victims. And uh, um, actually, uh, 13th, 12th, 13th of uh, July, uh, 1942, this mm -hmm. part, uh, like more than 500, uh, 5,000 5, people, they were killed in Kostopi. It's a, it's a small place, uh, um, small town, um, 
it's located uh, near the our city. So actually, they um, the, the 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 Jews was um, divided like the the the, the first the, the main part of of victims. They were killed. There were more like the old people and also women and 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 children. The another part was uh, was moved to to the ghetto. And uh, <clears throat> I worked with uh, testimonies, uh, survivors' testimonies uh, from Shaw Foundation, and I analyzed them and tried to I tried to. Um, Reconstruct the uh, daily life of uh, of victims in in the ghetto in uh, in our city, and uh, actually this uh, these documents these materials uh, materials were uh, used to in our like movie about the uh, in the ghetto. So um, it's like the documentary animation. It's also and. Uh, do you know that unfortunately in our city for now um, we have more, like less than one percent of uh, of Jews and uh, Jews like it's very very small Jewish community we have it and um, usually it's the people from the like the, the mixed of, of families and that's uh, that's why we for now we don't have like the second like generation you know that of um the of the people who are survived and during the holocaust in uh in our in our city but i combined um actually i i uh, not combined i tried to analyze the um the one members like two members, uh, the one of the book, it's like Varvara Baraz, uh, I, I mentioned about the story. And also I, I, I listened the testimony of her daughter, uh, Miriam Baraz, and try to, uh, to analyze the, like, you know, the published materials and uh, like, like members and uh, uh, interview. So I would say that it's not the different, but uh, it's also it's like it's different because the like interviews show that more detailed, and uh, they show more details, and uh, they show the more uh, expressions, emotional, and uh, you can show that uh, you can see that whole picture of the um, of the of the tragedy. Uh, if I correct and understand the question. So I tried it too. Yeah, both the questions about the Rivna, the Holocaust in Rivna, and then Holocaust deniers or people who are denying that it happened. Um, the, um, I'm wondering, we had a question about um, uh, two questions that are kind of related. One is where is the funding for these projects, many projects coming from? And then also, um, what has been the response to your work by Ukrainian government and social sectors? So, and I see those as tied because sometimes funding might come from the social sectors in Ukraine or Ukrainian government um, or not, right? So I'm wondering the funding for projects, number one, uh, or I guess you could start there. And then um, separately, we'll talk about responses to this work by the Ukrainian government um, and social sector. Okay, so I'm um, I uh, a little bit to to I would like if it's okay to, to add some question uh, answer for the previous question. Um, you know that for these six years um, we are didn't find the the people who are denied the Holocaust in our for example in our in our in our city. So I would say the. Um, are like also you yeah, like Ukrainian citizens and also Jewish community people from Jewish community in our city. Uh, they were um, they were glad that someone started to talk about the about the Holocaust and to um, and someone to to want to 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 remember about this. And I would say that uh, like the every year. In this day, in like the in November 1941, also like the uh, 
um, people from our city and uh, like also my students, uh, they were um, in the memorial place because we have Sosinki, it's called Sosinki in our city, this place, memorial place. And uh, they, they, were, uh, they were come, came to, to, to this memorial and uh, they wanted to do this. So I would say that we're glad that uh, we can, we have the people, but of course, like the, some of them, I mean, for example, from um, some scientists, we, we have the people who don't want to talk or deny the, you know, the, the strategy. The another question, so uh, the answer for the question, um, okay, so, like during this time, uh, we are uh, our our project were supported by the uh, U.S. Embassy in Ukraine, and also um, uh, Foreign Office uh, in Germany, and uh, it's like the main two of um, uh, funds. Um, and also, if it, if we talk about the local, uh, yeah, government. And so it's a little bit complicated uh, because uh, usually, um, I mean, they don't have enough money, but for example, I, I mentioned about the, um, about the project of my student. So yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's given the, the money from the local government. He was, this project was supported of lo local government and actually realized all, like the, um, in our city. And, uh, but I would say that uh, our like local government, they are support us, like they accepted our initiatives and uh, you know, they given like the, 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 the white light and to do uh, and to realize our initiatives. So we like be glad for that because for example, uh, when we are initiated the installation in install, installation of the memorial signed uh, to a Jewish victims uh, from Rivne Ghetto or uh, stumbling stones. So yeah, we had to, uh, to find agreement and statement with them. Yeah, so uh, it's not, it's, it's a bureaucracy and it's, uh, uh, I know in Ukraine, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but uh, yeah, so we did it. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I have um, two final questions. And the first one is, um, if you could speak some about the current status of the mnemonic staff vis-a-vis -vis the conflict and where the staff is. Um, that was a question that came from Mike Emmett, um, who I'm sure is thinking about all of you. But wondering if you could speak some about where um, the current status of the mnemonic staff. About our staff. Um, curious, uh, so um, if you're correct, uh, sorry, just uh, it's about the, the people, yeah? Mm -hmm. just, yeah, the people who are most involved with mnemonics and the current status where they are. And it came, the question came from Mike Gimmett, um, who you've worked with. So I think it's thinking okay, about so all of them. Thank you for the questions, uh, for, for the question. Uh, for example, Professor uh, uh, Maxim Huang, uh, he's our director and uh, he is, uh, uh, his research um, is focusing and he actually is a researcher focus um, on the um, Ukrainian Jewish relationship in, 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 the, uh, in the interwar period. But also uh, he teach, uh, um, he's teaching like the genocide studies in, uh, in our university. And um, um, he, I would say that he's a specialized um, um, in memory, memory policy um, about uh, about the Holocaust uh, in Ukraine, uh, one of them, and uh, about the Holocaust like in, in our region in general, and uh, he has uh, like he has three books. He's published three books, 
um, about this topic. The last one I showed that the last one, and um, he's a doctor of ethnopolitology, um, like the doctor of ethnopolitology, um, yeah, um, focus. The another one, um, the Petro Dolhanov, uh, um, he's also a historian and uh, he's a. Um, his PhD thesis was about the um, economic aspect, uh, Ukrainian economic ex uh, aspect, uh, during the like in the interwar period, but also it's like the Ukrainian Jewish relationship in this period, but economic uh, way. And uh, now he has worked with uh, mostly with with teachers, and. Um, um, and also he's an ethnologist. And uh, the third, I mean, like I, I'm, I working with uh, with uh, Holocaust studies. It's uh, it's my second topic. The first topic, uh, like my PhD thesis, was about national policy um, in in Russian empire empire. Um, in the second part of 19th centuries. It's like the Jewish and uh, Polish questions was about, but the, my main, uh, main topic is about the uh, gender perspective uh, during the Holocaust. So I work with uh, um, like documents, but also like uh, I use uh, the testimonies from Shoah Foundation and analyze them and uh, so I try to co compare that uh, the the men and women uh, perspective yeah, during the Holocaust and uh, um, in our region. But for now, I uh, I work with um, also with family studies. So I try to share my my uh, my focus, my research, yeah. and I also work at the university in Rina and and teach. Uh, um, genocide studies as well so also we have the the, the people from uh, from kiev and uh, from rivna and um, um, yeah so just and yeah. from different also from different ngos yeah and it's my um it's my understanding correct me if i'm wrong it effectively like while the work of Mnemonics continues. Many people, yourself, are now in a different country, um, are, are not in Rivne, um, and Maxim Gon has been mobilized and is fighting, I imagine, other people as well. And so the war has just completely disrupted, completely yeah, so, uh, halted so much of, of this. Yes, I am in Romania now. Um, uh, Maxim Gon has been mobilized. Uh, for example, Tanya Vodateka, uh, she's, in, she's now in Germany. And uh, two uh, our members uh, are staying in Ukraine now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, in this situation, this difficult situation, we are, we're keeping in touch and we are uh, trying to continue our work. Mm -hmm. uh, and and to do this yeah. in our city, in our region. Yeah. The um the last question I was actually going to offer to Jeff if you'd like to respond um because it because it came to me so I'll kick it, kick it to you. <laughs> uh, but you are a Russian historian and Natalia if you would like to weigh yeah. into but I will ask the question um uh to Jeff um which is. The question was related to history. How do you see the situation in Ukraine playing out? And the reason I'm asking Jeff is he's our um, historian of Eastern Europe in the history department and has been writing about this. Um, Natalia, if you choose to also weigh in, you're welcome to, but uh, if not, that's okay. In fact, I'll Natalia, would you like to address that first, Natalia? 
That's a tough question, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question. No, so, um, can I can I not? Maybe <laughs> yeah. it, or correct me if I'm way off base. I, obviously, I don't have an answer for that. I broke my crystal ball the other day. It was terrible. But uh, you know, I can see a cut one of a couple of different uh, things. Best case scenario is hopefully there'll be some sort of soon be be resolved very soon based on an agreement of uh, Ukrainian neutrality in which they agree not to become part of NATO and the Russians pull back. But I don't know if that's going to happen because it's sure looking like right now Putin is going to demand to at least take that eastern swath of the country that he's tr pulling troops back to, including the two disputed territories of Lugansk and Donetsk. And if you're Ukraine, do you just agree to give up a chunk of your country by to an invader i mean they get i mean obviously crimea the russians took that back in 2014 there really wasn't a whole lot of recourse to do anything about that uh maybe the uh, scenario that would develop out of that would be uh i mean actually let me say putin has clearly lost <laughs> i mean it has not gone according to plan i guarantee you he thought he would be dancing in the streets of kiev by now right? uh, and his the goal was regime change you know and actually if i had a question for any Italia, i would be curious to know what you think of his rather cynical appropriation of this history by referring to the ukrainians as you know they they're the fascists and uh de he called, one of the accusations he made was the need to denazificate denazification of the leadership and this sort of thing. I wonder how Ukrainians look upon that. Uh, but yeah, I think best case scenario, the Russians pull back, maybe try to occupy that eastern region, but the rest of the country is at peace and trying to rebuild. There's going to be quite a period of reconstruction to come here, right? Why, uh, but even if that were to happen, I think there would still be a continued continued fighting in that eastern region, as there was in Donetsk and Lugansk since 2014. Some the UN estimates 14,000 deaths in those two separatist regions over the last uh, seven years. I mean, the fighting would continue. Uh, it's hard to say. Worst case scenario, of course, is that Putin regroups, tries to take over the country, which he was trying to do. Clearly, his goal was regime change, and it hasn't happened, uh, thankfully. And uh, if he's determined to do that, I could see a worst case scenario, not unlike Afghanistan, in which there's a, you know, a continued insurgency for years to come, and, and resistance and insurgency uh, together here. Hard to say. And that would, that would be worst case scenario, because it would entail a lot of bloodshed and a lot of destruction, like we've already, continuation of what we've already seen. So, Let's hope that, uh, you know, Putin pulls back. I think he's doing this for very selfish political reasons of his own at home, playing to his own nationalistic base that wants to, you know, recover the old Soviet empire in effect. <laughs> but it's hard to say what that man is thinking. <laughs> he's got a lot of blood on his hands right now, though. And I think, you know, worst best case scenario of all would be Putin is removed from power, quite frankly. But uh, I don't know how realistic that is. It's, uh, the Putin's plans looks like the imperialistic plans, and they 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 want they want or they they want it like for this, I would say the at least for this thirty years of Ukrainian independence, exactly uh, to take our Ukraine uh, and to back Ukraine in the Soviet uh, Soviet time. So, yeah, uh, you know it's it's a difficult question, and I would say that. Uh, no one know and anyone i mean i don't know when exactly it it can um it can this war russian war against ukraine can uh um end i would say that uh, we are want to this and to wait for this for example like today or tomorrow we want we are expected but uh, but also I, um, for example I I I live I original from Rimna it's western part from of Ukraine but it's uh, our city located very close to Belarus um, board and uh, also like from one side and pol uh, polished from another uh, another side so from time to time our our territory was bombed. Uh, for this time, for these two months, and 
So yeah, it's uh, uh, for now it uh, looks a little bit safe and stable situation in our region, and we have like a lot of people who are moved from eastern part, like from uh, Kharkiv and uh, other cities. But um, we don't know what expect tomorrow, and uh, it's uh, like now Ukrainian people they are like you know the for these two months we understand yes it's like the i mean it's it's difficult it's war and uh, we try to to live in 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 this extreme uh, condition conditions but uh for example like after the pictures from bucha or other uh, cities so and um, yeah, it's uh, it's very it's it's dangerous, and uh, the situation is dangerous. And uh, for now, um, like I don't know, maybe after two weeks, the Putin wants to uh, to uh, against and to uh, to bomb our region, western region, western part of region again, or they want to occupy the Kiev again. So, yes, it's um, it's complicated questions, and I would say that uh, of course we are waiting for um, some agreement of peace, and which which were uh, signed, uh, we will sign. I hope so very soon, and it's uh, we 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 have the chance to come back in, uh, to our home, and. Um, yeah so but i would say the relations between the ukrainian and russia now for now they it's it's destroyed for for a long time it's like that as for me i mean it's my opinion i would say that yeah thank well thank you so much um and our thoughts are you with all of you and your family and those of the people of mnemonics um and ukraine um, and uh, thank you everyone for coming and thank you, Natalia, for speaking with us today. Yes, thank you so much. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Another round of applause for Dr. Yevchik. Mm -hmm. for... Yeah, we have thank yous in the chat that I'm <laughs> breaking to life. So anyway, <laughs> um, people are very grateful for you um, speaking and joining us today. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you to for the invitation. If you have questions or some suggestions or propositions, we are open, opening, and we I I we would like to um, to answer for uh, and reply for your questions. Uh, mm -hmm. You can write out to our to us a mail letters. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just thank you so much. Thank you. You. Thank you to everyone who, who joined us. Um, and so this is our last talk for the historical roots of our time for this year. But next year, next fall, we're going to pick up again with this series. So please join us um, when you see those announcements. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording.